Hey guys, Mark here at Blue Bowl Electronics. Hopefully another little quick, fun, educational video today. So, what we've got on the bench here is an ICOM V8000, ICV8000. And I've had this in my pickup truck for the better part of 15 or 20 years. Whenever they first came out, I fell in love with them. It's a 75 watt output radio, 2 meter, and it has a built-in speaker on the front, which works really well uh, mounting in a truck or whatnot. So, but that's not what this video is all about. This video is all about the fan on this thing. I was using it about two weeks ago and I start hearing this noise. Now, I'm going to be quiet and let you hear this fan for a second. It's a little loud, but listen. In my truck, I have it mounted at about that angle. And you can hear the fan, when, the, when gravity pulls the fan down, uh, the bearings grind like crazy. Just not good. At any rate, purpose of this video is how to go about figuring out what kind of fan you need and how to replace the fan on any kind of piece of equipment. I don't care if it's a piece of test gear, uh, maybe a ham radio, a CB, you name it. Uh, let's dive in. All right, here we go. We can see the fan mounted on the back. This thing's mostly heat sink. And then you've got a metal cover here, but you can see the fans mounted on the back of this unit. First thing we want to want to do is get the actual fan off. Okay, this one happens to be super simple. Simple Phillips screwdriver. Little Phillips screws. Off comes a cover that we'll reuse. Uh, it just keeps things out of the fan. It keeps people from sticking their fan in them. Finger in the fan. And I went ahead and removed four screws from the top here. Keep all my screws in a nice little magnetic tray. And what I really want to get in here too is where the fan actually plugs into the board so that I can unplug the fan then and take it completely out like this. So a few things you're going to want to note. One, what direction was the fan blowing on the unit? And if a lot of fans will have a little marking on the top right here. It shows that it spins this way. I don't know if you can see the little arrow right here. And then it also shows that it blows inward. So the way this fan worked on this unit is it blows inward. And if you'll notice here, another piece of key data we're looking for, right here it will tell me this is a DC 12 volt fan and it operates at 0.1, I got to get this up here so I can see it, 0.18 amps, okay? And so we got to be careful when we buy a new one to get something in the same spec. Let's say we found something that was instead of 1.18 amps, it was 0.4 amps. All of a sudden, you may be pulling more than the circuit board trace could handle and or the power being supplied for this fan. So. Let's go see what we can find online now, knowing these specs. Oh yeah, one more critical thing we've got to know. Most of these fans, uh, from my experience, are all measured in millimeters. And if you'll notice, this one is roughly, it is 50 um, millimeters by 50 millimeters. And then you'll have to figure out the width here. And it looks like on this one, it's 20 centimeters. So 50 by 50 by 20. All those measurements are critical. All right, here we go, 50 by 50 by 20, 12 volts at 0.18 amps. All right, so I looked up the part number online here for this fan, the DH1205BH, and it says it's a three pin fan, but in reality, the one here is a two pin fan. Now, look, it's a DC fan, that third wire, which is typically the yellow wire, by the way, the black and white are just kind of positive and negative, 12 volts. Um, the yellow wire is typically a sense wire that sends a signal back to maybe your motherboard or, or a processor or whatnot to tell it how fast the fan is running, okay? And then if you have a four wire connection, typically the fourth wire is then to control the speed of the fan via some pulse modulation or something. Um, but in our case, we only need a two lead fan. So you could actually buy this three lead fan, cut the yellow wire off, just shrink tape the end of it, and you would be uh, good to go there. Anyway, I happen to have a couple fans on. I keep these size fans in uh, stock here. Um, and so if I look here, um, this one, like I said, 0 0 0.18 amps at 12 volts DC. And it, it produces 6,600 RPM. So I'm looking for something in that similar range. Doesn't have to be exact. I don't want to go way over on the current rating. I wouldn't want something that pulls too um, 0.25 amps or something like that. But if it pulled 0.2 amps, that's within 10% tolerance here. I think you'd be fine. 
and you don't want to go way slower than the 6600 rpm you maybe go down to 6000 something like that you'd be okay or maybe go up to 7000 going up the only downside is it's louder all right um so anyway the fans i happen to have in stock are um right here they're point one five amps instead of 0.18 and the ones i have run at 6100 rpms instead of 6600 and i feel like for my own use here that will be just fine and i'm going to put that on there um and kind of go with that so if this was like a repeater or something that was super heavy duty being used all the time um i might would um you know find the exact specs or even maybe bump it up a little bit but um the downside to bumping up the speed above the 6600 rpm then you probably draw more current that might cause an issue so try to stay within maybe 10 percent of what's here and i feel like i'm pretty close with what i've got in stock i'm going to get it installed and we'll see how this thing does all right the first thing i notice here is that while my fan came with a two pin plug on it uh, these are far from the same size so as close to the pins as i can up in this range right here maybe a about an inch down or so certainly inside the case i'm going to cut this off and i'm going to do the same over here and then i'm going to uh, strip the wires back and solder those on and put just a little bit of heat shrink tubing on it that way i've got uh, this plug on the ends of this wire here also notice this wire here is about this long and this wire here <laughs> is really long i'm going to shorten this up to be closer to this length i don't want all that extra wire laying around all right as you can see here we've got it uh, put on heat shrink tubing on um, both wires and we are ready to plug it back in all right guys as you can see now we've got the vid the fan mounted on the back uh, let's turn this unit around here and let's turn it on i left the cover off just in case something wasn't working and but anyway the unit's on, but you notice the fan's not running. It won't run till you start transmitting. You can see the fan there. Super quiet. No matter what angle I put it at. I love it. All right, one more thing I'm going to show you over here, and then we'll wrap this video. All right, guys, for whatever it's worth, my favorite brand of fan to use, and I just went got through rebuilding a bunch of test gear, putting fans in them. And this was the brand I used everywhere I could. I did an IRF COM120, and it uses two fans. I got them from this company. Anyway, on that COM120, the fans were $14.95 a piece. So they're not super expensive. Maybe a little more than your $7 or $8 fan. But these fans, super high-end, really good bearings, soft mounts on them. They come with some little fusible links between the fan that you can insert in line that have some resistance to them that will slow the fan down if you want. So you got kind of got a high, a medium, a low uh, in the wiring, plugging if you wish. At any rate, their website here, not noctua.at. Um, you know, you can look up 200 millimeter fan, 140, 120, and all the different speeds, um, sizes, whether it's pulse width modulated or just a straight up DC fan, whatnot, uh, 92, 80, 60. If you'll notice, there's no 50 millimeter. Otherwise, that's what I would have put on this unit. But I did want to point this website out. You can buy these on Amazon. Just look up what you're needing. Find the part number here. Go find it on Amazon and buy it, and uh, you'll be happy. All right, we're going to call this one a wrap. Hope everybody learned a little something. Uh, for all my ham radio friends out there, this is uh, Mark, KG4FDR, and um, hopefully we'll catch you on the air. 73, everybody. Uh, have a great day.